here's how I would fix the postseason. This is how I would crown a champion if I were commissioner for a day. The first thing that I would do is that I would get rid of divisions in all of college football. So I'm talking about within conferences. So there would no, no longer be a Pac-12 North and South. There would no, long, no longer be an SEC East and West or Big Ten East and West. Every conference would just be the conference. You would throw away the divisions. Now, since I don't think that we're going to have a massive amount of realignment to where every single conference is going to have the same number of teams, what I think would happen is each conference would have to decide on some sort or form of round-robin schedule. Now, this can be done in any number of ways, and I've seen – ways by Bill Conley at SB uh, Nation. He says the pod system. I think that's a really good one. Bill's a really smart guy. I think you could also do a performance-based system where you're going to face, you know, the tough, the eight toughest teams in your conference. If you're the champion from the year before, if you're the last place, then you're going to face the eight bottom teams in your conference. There's ways to roll around some sort of round-robin schedule, and, and it does a couple of things. I think the most beneficial thing that getting rid of divisions does is it balances out the schedules within conference play. You no longer have a weak division and a strong division. You no longer have the benefit of who did you play in the other division versus who did you not play in the other division. You would still have some teams that you miss on a rotating basis, but you would play teams more frequently uh, over the course of, let's say, two, three, four years. You would also have a, a much greater version of a balanced schedule within the conference. Every team would play something that was somewhat similar versus what we have now, in particular in, in leagues like, let's, let's call it the Pac-12 South and North, where the South was really down. Those schedules clearly not as tough as what was going on in the North. Once you do away with divisions, then this is the consequence. You pit the top two teams based on that round-robin round schedule in the conference championship game. At that time, I believe that you would have 10 of the top 15 or 16 teams in the country playing in conference championship games, in those five conference championship games. Now, there's a couple of unintended consequences that I want to touch on really quickly because I know people would push back on this. Uh, you would have to have your key rivalry games, in particular against teams that have historically great teams like Michigan, Ohio State, and I think those would need to be pushed to the first week of November, maybe the last week of October, so that you avoid the rematch that could be inevitable with having your two biggest brands or best brands playing the last week into the season and then potentially as a rematch um, into the, the conference championship game. And then the other pushback is that you're almost, almost assured of having a rematch. Very similar to what the Big 12 does right now where they are assured of having a rematch because they only have 10 teams in their conference play a nine-game conference schedule. Those are two drawbacks to this, but I do think the overall benefits of getting rid of divisions would be huge. You've got the top two teams in each league playing a conference championship game, and I think that more league games will matter. More teams within the league will be playing more meaningful games in the month of November than what you have now. Uh, okay, so that's number one, divisions. Number two, I would change the way that we rank teams in college football. You know what I think about the AP poll. You know what I think about preseason polls. I think both of those are outdated, and quite frankly, I don't think that they're all that accurate. I think that the AP does a nice job of adjusting towards the end of the, the season, but certainly uh, at the beginning of the season, it's more based on confirmation bias and sometimes outright ignorance than anything else. This is the way that I would rank teams. Think of a modified BCS version of how you rated teams. Right now, we've got a 13-person committee. I think we need more variables to the equation rather than just 13 variables. The statistical variance of a 13-variable equation is far too great versus, uh, let's call it, 26-variable equation, or maybe a 52-variable equation. Or how about you have three committees, each making their own poll, and then you have three to five sets of really good computer data, like the Sagarin ratings or the S&P Plus ratings, and you take all of those and average all of that out to get what your composite top 25 is. That's the way that you avoid, avoid rogue votes. That's the way that you avoid political corruption, which I think can absolutely apply when you have active ADs on a 13-person committee that have to recuse themselves at times when debating about teams. All of that would be better. More variables, 
is better. A computer uh, component, I think, is also something that I would really argue for because then you can take some of that human bias and confirmation bias out of the equation. We need a better composite of the ranking. Now, would it matter all that much? Yes, it would at the end because this is how I would ultimately decide the four playoff teams. And here's point number three. I'm going to take the top four teams out of a group of teams at the end that qualify for consideration. Okay, I'm going to say that again. I'm going to take the top four teams out of a group of teams that qualify for consideration. It's not just the top four teams the way that the composite tw uh, top 25 spits them out. Nope, it's very different than that. I'm going to take the five Power Five champions based on that one versus two top two seeds in each conference championship game, and I'm going to take those five and I'm going to put them in a hat. I'm going to take the best two or three group of five teams that win their conference championship and put them in a hat. I'm going to take Notre Dame if they win 11 games, and I'm going to put them also into that same hat. Quick caveat here. I should have started this off. If I had my real druthers, Notre Dame would join a conference. I don't think that's going to happen, so I'm forming this whole plan based on the fact that Notre Dame stays independent. So you've got that group of teams, and then only from that group of teams do you take the four best teams. At that point, you can say best. Why? Because they're all champions. They've all earned their way to be considered. I think that this does a couple of different things. One, it gives us a much better version of, and, and much less uh, uh, debatable session at the end. We're going to know and have a great idea of what's going on at the end. It makes you earn your way there. And then another thing it does, it increases the importance of the regular season, and it also gives a much more legit shot to the group of five teams. Listen, if Georgia was thrown out of the mix, then all of a sudden UCF would have had a much better shot this year to be considered. All it would have taken is like a Texas win over Oklahoma and maybe Northwestern stuns Ohio State, and now all of a sudden, guess what? UCF would go to the playoff. Even if that happened this year, I don't think they would have gone because they would have just thrown Georgia in. So this, my version, is a much more legitimate shot for a group of five team to actually go to the college football playoff than what the scenario is now when they just take the subjective eye test and say four best and then they wipe their hands with a 13-person committee. So let me go over it again really quickly. Get rid of divisions. Top two teams in each conference championship game have to win your conference championship in order to be considered, and at the end, our four are going to be decided by a composite poll that has more variables than what it has now. Just think of it. You all clamoring for an eight-team playoff. I think that you dilute the regular season. You dilute conference championships. I'm giving you an increase in both. All those games would be more important and more impactful under my scenario rather than just increasing to eight. I'll save that argument for another day. That's how I would fix the college football playoff.